Hey everybody, welcome to Losing Your Mind with Chris Cosentino. I'm your host, Chris Cosentino. We are here to talk about people that inspire and all my guests are inspiring in so many different ways. And I'm really looking forward to digging deep into how they got to where they are, to the top of their game, how hard they've worked, how much they've given up and how they're giving back. So without further ado, here's our next guest. Hey everybody, welcome to Losing Your Mind with Chris Cosentino. I am here with longtime friend, former employee, uh, Sean Naputi. What's up, Duk Duk? Oh, what the? <laughs> that, that's a that's a high school nickname. Still <laughs> used up to now, and every time I hear that, it's just like, okay, that's a that, I know that person, or that you know, it's like, okay, how do you how do you know that name? Oh man, that's, but, that goes back. Yeah, um, Chris, thanks for having me, man. I'm super excited. It's uh, been a long time coming, and yeah, I've been trying to set up this interview. Yeah, well, first, I, I, I kind of want to start off like you're from Guam. You came to the Bay Area. Did you come to go to culinary school? Is that your reasoning for coming to the Bay Area? Yes. Yes, my first my first choice was um, pork, um, and I don't know. My family didn't like that because it was, I don't know, not the closest point of contact to Guam. So they said, "Hey, go to the coast, which is San Francisco." I'm like, "All right, that's my grandpa's favorite city." He knew the city, so he's like, "Why don't you give San Francisco a try?" I was like, "Okay, I'll give it a try." And that was when? What year was that? That was right after high school. So that's like late 2003 i want to say december 2003 um i i couldn't get into cca until the next um semester so um i stayed with my aunt uncle down in monterey and you know just to like get the mind ready i um enrolled into this community college down there for like culinary <laughs> school and i did that for like two months just to like get the head ready you know and just to like know what to expect to go like to this big city this quote-unquote famous school and I was just like nervous just like you know I, I just never been to a big city and never been to like an institute so I did that for a while and then just get you know like I said just getting the head ready and getting vocabulary Cause that's what culinary culinary vocabulary is definitely. I, I, I got to say that that's, I mean, that's what culinary school, like they're like, Oh, how is culinary school? I'm like, honestly, like culinary school just teach you, teaches you vocabulary, you know, the cooking world, like you, you have to get out there and you can't just go to culinary school and become a line cook. I mean, yes, there's talented cooks out there, but to be honest, there's like so many ins and outs of, you know, just being a cook. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, culinary school definitely is a, is a sets a foundation. Do I think everybody needs it? Mm, no. no, but I think for some people it's really beneficial for me, it was oh. beneficial, but it's not for everybody. Right. Um, yeah. You know, it sets you with a foundation. It gives you the terms, the techniques, basic yeah. type skills, your, your, your basic sauces, your stock procedures, you know? Yeah. But see, on that point, it's like, okay, you teach me the, the mother sauces, but like, can I do it? Like, are you going to give me the chance? Are you going to be like right behind me, like breathing down my neck and like making sure I'm doing it right? No. Like, you know, there's no like much guidance until you get into a kitchen that's like, <laughs> you better fucking get this shit right because this is going to a customer, you know? And that, I mean, that's what I've learned. Like, you can't just cook. Okay, here it is, you know, just swinging it left to right it's like no you got to get it down you know you got to do it right and you know it's we're serving the people and it's kind of how you make money i guess <laughs> yeah. so you 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 came to the states you you start culinary school what was your first job out of culinary school my first job out of culinary school i don't know if you call a stage call a job but my first introduction to a kitchen was at La Folie. With Roland. Roland, yeah. They stuck me in this freaking maybe three by three space. 
like prepping rabbits. I'm like, holy cow. Dude. I, I kind of been like, every time I turn, I'm like hitting the wall. And like, that was, that was like, that was like the, I don't know, like, that was like the movie set for me. You know, like when you go to a movie or like, you, you like, you know, kind of imagine like how a movie set, like the cameras there and then like, the, you know, they're taking, you know, they're acting in front and then you're in the back behind the camera. That was, that was my first like ever, like, holy shit. You know, just seeing the flames, people calling out tickets, you know, just, just everything going on. And that's when that was like, zzz, like that buzz and that, that adrenaline, like that's what like kind of drove my, my fire. So Roland didn't offer me, uh, he could, he, he couldn't pay me while doing a stage. So I was like, oh man, I need, I need to get some money. So I went to foreign cinema and they were so nice enough to offer me minimum wage, get paid while I was doing my internship. So that was, was Doval there when you were there? Doval, Doval was there. Doval was a young gun. There was a lot of, lot of, lot of, I learned a lot there. You, you know? Okay, wait a second. Hang on. Are you on your daughter's iPad? No, this is my lady's iPad. Well, you just raised your hand. <laughs> like, oh wait so so, so 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 that okay so this ipad so my daughter does tutoring she does like this for school. Her, it's for school yeah. raise your hand yeah no no this is not for school this is for some kind of program that the school offered but um anyways it's this lady in mexico that teaches this tutoring so we had to get this app on raising your hand <laughs> that is amazing yeah, <laughs> I just. Like, All of a sudden, Booty, why are you raising your hand? Do you need to go to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> it's for a question. <laughs> but yeah, so, that was that was my my first job uh, was lawfully not my job, but like my first you know scene of a professional yeah. kitchen, and then my first actual job was foreign cinema. Wow. I mean, talk about two iconic San Francisco locations. I mean, yeah. Roland closed right before the pandemic. He closed La Folie. He and his wife shuttered the doors. But, you know, foreign cinema is just still going and going really strong. Still going, man. I, I, I went there maybe like two weeks ago for brunch and I was like, shit has not changed. They're still doing like 300 covers. It's busy. It's always been busy. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, and food's great. Every, you know, always. It's, it's an institute now. Mm -hmm. I agree. hundred percent. You know, Gail and John created an iconic location, an iconic feel. Yeah. But I mean, that's I, a great, great group of people to really, you know, yeah. great starts in a city. Yeah. And, and that's, when, that's when, that's when I really found out what Shape the Knees was all about. That's when I found out, you know, like what, you know, Alice wanted and what her vision was because John and Gail worked for Alice yep. and Judy Rogers. So I kind of like was around when they, they would come in, like, you know, kiss the ring and just like, I was like, holy shit, there's a, there's a hierarchy in this thing, you know? And like, they just got treated like, you know, the Queens. And I, and I really, I really, they were very soft and gentle and, you know, but with the, with the a demeanor, you know, that, you know, like they, they always taught me, like, always, I always remember this phrase from Gail was just like tossing the salad and like pretending they're like angel wings with new feathers, you know? <laughs> so up to, up to this day, I always use that word, uh, toss the salad, like fresh feathered angel wings. It's smart. I mean, it, you know, you're treating it delicately. And I think mm -hmm. for years, you know, you definitely see that aggressive hand, like beat it. It's like dress the bowl, not the greens. Gently, you mm -hmm. know, the lettuce leaves within that bowl to dress evenly, and then place it on the plate. You don't need to sit there and because you know. Let's be honest. There's a lot of uh, aggressiveness to be had when people try to do it in a hurry, and in doing so, they just damage all the hard work that the farmers. Yeah. Do. So with that, I, I kind of you know kind of made up my own technique. 
like moving the ball and your hand, you know? So it's not like, I don't know, it's a little crazy. It's probably a little bit much. And the guys at the restaurant kind of laugh at me, but they, they do it. And, you know, it's like, look. They can laugh know? all they want as long as they do what you ask them to do. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, and they love it. They're like, oh, yeah, you know? So it's like, you know, so yeah, that's, that was my first job and take a lot well, of that. How, you know, that's building, you started building your foundation at these locations, you know, you're like, you're there and you're working and, you know, had, had you thought at that point there, you know, you're, you're at foreign cinema. Did you say to yourself at any point, I wonder if I want to cook food from home at that point, were you thinking about that at all? Or were you just constantly nope. thinking about, I want to learn new, I want to see different. Yep, it was all new. I want to learn. I want to be a sponge. I want to work with the best people. I want to, I just wanted to learn more, learn more techniques, learn more cuisines. And honestly, when I start thinking about, oh, I need to learn more French, I need to learn more Italian. But then that kind of just like whisked through just because we're in San Francisco or in California. So every restaurant I worked at, including in Kanto, was all about, yeah, the, the cuisine, but it was all about the ingredients. And that's what sparked me when I was at Encanto. It was like, fuck, Chris is doing Italian food, but still bringing in local ingredients. So that's what kind of sparked, kind of started to like, huh, I could do it. But then that was just like a pipe dream, you know? There was nothing like, I have... I have no, no connections here. I have, you know, I didn't know anybody with me. Just like, I have no base of connections and like, you know, guidance of like starting a restaurant. So I just like, that was just the pipe dream. Just like, go learn, just keep going, you know, just soak up as much information as you can. Surround, I was just telling myself, like surround myself with like cooks that have the right intentions and just hang out with them, you know, and just talk cooking all day, you know, that's all we did. Watch, watch cooking shows, read books. And then Iron Chef fucking America came. And then that's when I saw you, you know, that's when I saw you. And I was like, this fucking guy is like, <laughs> that's, that's like, I wanted to be like you. Like, I wanted to be like, you know, that I wouldn't say aggressive, but determination. I want to have that determination. I wanted to have that confidence, you know, on, on like, you know, like you, you, you taught me like no one, no one taught you how to butcher, you know? And from there, I'm like, fuck, dude, I don't, I don't need to go. Like, I can just do this on my own. I could study it on my own. I could, you know, try and do it on my own because Chris did it, you know, and that's, and up to this day, Chris, I still remember like fucking you used to tell me like nobody taught me how to do this shit. I, I had to, you know, learn it on my own. And then from there, it's like that kind of put a fucking cement in my, in my head was like, no one's going to fucking hand you this shit. You know, no one's no one's going to be like, Sean, come here. I'm going to show you how to do this, you know. So then from there on, it was like. You know, I was just really ecstatic on like the projects you would give us and we needed to figure it out. Yeah, you were there to guide us. But then, you know, when you're there, just you and the meat or the protein, what, whatever you're working on, it was just like kind of be more methodical about it. You know, maybe I was I was kind of, you know, like in my greener days, it was just like nothing like the process, the one, two, three process wasn't there. But the whole idea of like doing it yourself and find out like, how can, you know, how can you learn? How can you, how, how can I learn to butcher a lamb? And the only way to do it is to get a lamb and butcher it yourself. Get in the back with Hector. Yeah, exactly. Right. I think, I mean, you were, you were at Encanto for three years plus. Yeah. Like four and a half. Four and a half. And, and, and I still tell this day, like, um, uh, what you call that? Uh, foreign cinema was like high school and Kanto was like college I mean, and that's and that's how I kind of like you know you we went I mean I took you guys down to harvest animals oh you did you did everything with us Chris and and 
I, you know, all my best years and my, my, I would say like prime sponge years was with you, you know, like just soaked up everything. I met all the, the badass chefs, the badass chefs used to come in, you know, and just talk shop. And that, that was like the most inspiring time of my cooking career. You know, it's my, my, my young sponge years when I was just like, fucking See, so, have, you know? I think about those times. I mean, we had Mark Miller one night sit with there still three in the morning. Oh man, uh, I still remember our conversations about, and that music, his music, his music theory on food. Da da da. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and to this day, Chris, I think of my, so we do tasting menus at the restaurant. And I think of the mute, the, the da da di da di. I still think of that on like how the, the customer will eat it, you know? And it's still stuck with me, man. And I thank you for that. I thank you for, you know, being you, being, you know, super open, you know, um, I, nourishing. Was I pushed you guys like fucking. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. But, but with like a nerd, you know, like a, almost like a big brother, kind of like big dad, kind of like, I don't give a fuck how you feel about me. This, this is going to help you. You know what I mean? Like you pushed us and man, I still talk about like when we had to do our own sauces, we had to break down our own, you know, protein, wash our own greens. Like now there's prep guys that do that, you know, but. I think at the time, I mean, I look back at it now. What we were able to accomplish as a team, I don't think could be done now. Um, no way. I mean, we changed the entire menu every day. Yeah. yeah. You guys would come walking in like petrified, like how, what is he changing today? Oh man. And, and Chris, that made me tougher, dude. Like you guys, you guys humped it. I mean, you guys would hump it and we've gone, whatever. I mean, that's, there's been a lot of great people. That was a great team who was able to facilitate really unique food. We mm -hmm. were able to do multiple, I mean, how many years of head to tails did we do of pushing the envelope, having Harold McGee come down and figure out stuff with us. But like, I think for me, the best part is now seeing what all you guys are doing and everybody's gone on to do their own thing. I mean, that was the goal. And I always said that for moment one was oh, yeah. to set you guys up for success. I mean, we are all there to give the guests the best experience. But when you leave, the goal was to give you the tools to succeed on your own, to get a job wherever you may want and whatever yeah. you do. And, you know, that was always the goal. So hopefully it worked. Oh, man. And to this day, we I thank you, you know, and I still tell everybody that you're kind of my mentor. <laughs> So like, I, I want to talk a little bit about like figuring out, you know, once you moved on from Encanto, you know, and, and, and how, what, what were the next steps for you after that? And where, what were you looking for when you left there? And what were your next steps to get to where you are now? So my thing was like, after leaving Encanto, I could work wherever I wanted with whoever I wanted. And at that time, uh, my buddy, Matt Sigler, was opening up Sula Maria. That's right. And, yeah, and Central Kitchen. So he offered me, he was like, hey, do you want, do you want to be my Sue? And I was like, I don't know, you know, like, I'm fucking pretty deep in Encanto. Like, we're pretty solid up there and I, I don't know how to break it. So I gave him a notice to Encanto and I joined Sula Maria. Um, Sula Maria, you know, we, we built that from the ground up. Um, and then Matt moved on. And then I was just like, huh, you know, what's next for me? Like, it was just like a day-to-day -day kind of thing. I wasn't really uh, not, you know, not giving the benefit of the doubt. Like, it was a great restaurant. Uh, I, you know, there's, there were some, a lot of great chefs, like, up, you know, that came out of that central kitchen. And I was just like, oh, man, I... I need to do my food. And I, I was like, how, how can I do my food or, you know, and this is when that whole pop-up thing was, you know, that whole, that mission Chinese kind of, that was like that time where like people get to showcase, you know, who you are and what food, do you, you know? So um, then 
Mr. Pollo had uh, offered me like, hey, do you want to come here and just cook and do like four course tasty menu of tomorrow food? And I'm like, oh, I don't know about it. I'm not, I'm not ready, you know? I, I, don't, I don't know. Not, not yet. So I just like hung out with Manny from Mr. Pollo for about a year. And then all of a sudden, like after seeing him do his thing, you know, I was like, yeah, dude, I, I think I'm ready. I'll start, I'll just start messing around, you know? Then I went home to Guam um, just to like refresh the, me you know, refresh the, you know, just kind of like get, get that energy and, you know, and then I, that was just Christmas and I came back and then it was like after New Year's and it was just like dead. So I was just like, all right, this is kind of like, this is the time where I can just start like, you know, messing around and start putting things together. So I did. It was at Mr. Pollo's on 24th Street, super small restaurant, we had 10 seats. It was just me and Manny, just like, you know, we just go to the farmer's market, get a protein, and then we just make a meal. And that was like, I really enjoyed that because it's like, it was just like almost like that, you know, an artist just like paint this canvas. So I had a blank canvas and I used that blank canvas to like start, you know, putting my uh, Chamorro food in my, my repertoire. So, you know, things went on. M Manny moved on. He went uh, to open another restaurant. And then he was like, hey, do you want to take over this spot? Right, you know, right, you know, right down a few doors down. Landlord's cool. Like, all he wants is this amount of rent. You could do whatever. Like, this landlord didn't know anything. Like, <laughs> All he cared was just about the money, you know? He could have cared if you freaking open up a trap house in there, you know? As long as you, you give him money, he's fine. Like, he has no idea. So we did, so then that's, um, so that's going all the way to 2014. So 2014 was the year we first started Prevet You. And it was just like a pop-up, you know? Like, hey, uh, <laughs> Manny's not here anymore. It's, I made an Instagram for Perbet You. I was like, hey, you know, um, and then I started like following all my friends, like, hey, come here, like, you know, all my all my friends from Guam. And then that's how it kind of started. We were just doing like these four course menu for $40. Can't do that anymore, can you? No. And then it was just all food from Guam. People were like, oh sure, that's pretty cool. And, and no kitchen to to just to uh, remind you is like this space we had all we had was four induction burners a secret outdoor back grill that nobody knew not even the health inspector health inspector comes in we just close the back door <laughs> wow. and um yeah so then we did that for about uh, two years two three years and the landlord started to see like oh shit these guys are getting busy you know, and then he hiked up the rent like two times. I'm like, how can you do this? There's no hood. Like we're there's nothing's changed. So we just set peace, you know, and just started started being nomads and just started like doing pop ups at breweries and whatnot, and just like freaking trying to find like, all right, we have we have we have our our demographic. Now, how can we find a space, an actual space? Then comes Daniel Patterson. Daniel Patterson was doing like this whole cultural thing. That's when he started with Reams and he started doing the Alta. And then some, I forget who sent Daniel like, hey, these guys need a space. Oh, Brett, Brett from, what was that? Aster. Yep. It's like, hey, I think Brett gave his notice. So Daniel was just probably like scrambling. So he, he emails us like, hey, I got this opportunity. You guys want to become partners? You know, um, Astro is going to be available. Brett um, gave his two month notice. What do you think? So I was just like, fuck, Daniel Patterson's, you know, like asking us to be a partner. I was just ecstatic. I was like, oh, I can't believe this. So he sends us his, this contract, right? And we haven't signed the contract or anything. We're just like, oh shit, this guy's fucking legit, right? So then 
we were like, okay, all right, here's a contract. Now we got to get like a lawyer, somebody to read this, you know? So we give it to our, our friend from Guam who works with YouTube and he does like all the YouTube business, um, the business side, financial side. So we're like, hey, bud, can you help us out with this email or this contract? Because that's all he does is contract. So we sent him this contract. Dude, not even like 10 minutes later, he was like, bogus contract. <laughs> uh, what he, he's like, get out now or like something within that lines. He was like, and then he circled all, all, all of the mistakes. I don't know if I want to say this right now. Okay. So then we reached out, we're like, oh man, this is not right. And then we get a call from Caleb from La Cocina. He's like, hey man, I got this opportunity. Like, you know, this is, this is what you guys should do. I worked with him. This is, you guys just focus on you. You guys can do it. So we're like, oh man, there's no way. So we, so we X that partnership. Oh, cherry on top, why we X that partnership? Because he told the Chronicle that we were becoming partners before we even signed the contract. That's when we were like, oh my God. We were, we were prepping for this event in LA, uh, this pop-up in LA. And we we're prepping at this kitchen. And then uh, I just get a bunch of texts like, bing, bing, like, congrats, congrats. We're like, what the fuck, congrats? And then we click it and it's the Chronicle that's saying, oh, the Perpetu and Daniel Patterson are moving to the Astro space. We're like, bro, this guy's crazy. So we call up, we call up the, their PR. We're like, yo, we never said anything, blah, blah, blah. And then a neighbor saw that, you know, and then they're like, no, dude, don't do it. Don't do it. Like, it, it doesn't work that I don't see your relationship working. Here's Commonwealth. Here comes Commonwealth. Like, Hey, there's, I know a spot. Um, that friend had a friend who was, who just got off, you know, like, Hey, Commonwealth is up, you know, they're using, and nobody knew they're like, would you guys like to take it? And then I was like, no, no, man, that was, it was like fucking 10,000. We're like, no way. That's too much. Like, we couldn't do that, you know, but sure enough, we figured it out. You know, everything started to line up. You know, we started getting all our, you know, eggs in a row. And then we land this space in Commonwealth. And my God, I was just, I haven't, I never had that feeling of like, I almost kind of felt like I was lost and like, mindless and like almost like writer's block like where do i start you know yeah we got a space now where do we start so i had to like i had to like come to jesus and be like okay what's you know and then 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 i just started like reaching out you know pulling some ears and just asking questions and then just started moving along just moving along and then just kind of did what i did and yeah, here we are. Did you ever think that getting a getting a a space with a parking lot, you're like, fuck, I'm paying for a parking lot. That was your saving grace. It was, but it was like, we were paying for two spaces. How are we gonna cover this space? And then the, the easiest answer was like, we had to knock on every business door within two block radius and be like, hey, we got the cheapest parking in the mission, you know? Would you like to park your car here? And so we did. Thank God, like, you know, a few restaurants and bars, like some of the bars and owners were like parking in the sides. So we're like, all right, cool. We have something coming in and it's just like zero. But then as we got started, you know, moving on, we're like, now we need to find something to be sustainable out here. So we started talking about getting, you know, get, we had to get a permit because it was a new, it was, it was, it was a different property. So there's two different properties. So we didn't know that. So for each property, you got to get a different, you know, a certain a permit. Then we had to find out it was zoned. So we had to go through this whole thing, man. And like almost took a year to find out just to ask the city, Hey, 
can we do food in this space? Is this zoned for food? And it took a year for them to say, oh yes, this is zoned for food. Okay, I just want to put this out there. This is nothing they teach you in culinary school. This is no. not anybody mentors you for. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> you have to go out there. Like, they don't teach you these things, you know? Nobody ever tells you, not even you, not even other owners, like, hey, before nope. you open up, you got to go to the city. You got to get these permits. You got to go to the fire, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, it's a headache. No one ever said that. You know, okay. I, I mean, don't say I didn't warn you it was a headache. I warned you it was a headache. But yeah, free. But then no one ever told me like how political it would get of like, you know, and whatever. Here we are. And because you had that parking lot, it really benefited you guys during the pandemic. Yes. It allowed you. And let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, you guys opened and then you went into the pandemic. Yeah, we were, man, we like had a great write up. Uh, we were three months, four months in. Boom. We just opened in this, the November, yep. December, January, February, March. That's four solid, like cranking, you know, everyone grabbing their ankles, like four months, just straight, straight, just nonstop. And then so, we just get that. Burnt. Yeah. And all the world grinded to a halt wasn't just you and I think yeah 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 but how you guys managed from that was really impressive I mean you work with World Central Kitchen you work with with Sword to Plowshares you mm -hmm. work with the other companies for online foods feeding people in need during that time allowed you guys to not only employ your team but keep the keep the lights on honestly Chris that I never felt like I was doing God's work and God's work was feeding the people. And through that work with WCK and Frontline, Frontline not so much because it was more about the hospitals, right? But it was the WCK that kind of made me feel like how fortunate we were. Uh, not, only, not only that we were uh, fortunate to work with WCK, but fortunate enough to feed these these communities that were vulnerable. And I never, I never understood how vulnerable some communities are in this city. And it just opened a whole new, whole new perspective on like how I, you know, how you treat people, how and not to judge and not since I have, you know, two kids, like that put a like a stamp, like, dude. This is God's work right here, you know? And it, it just, like, yeah, the city was dead. There was no business. But that alone kind of, like, kept our fire going. Because why? We were feeding the people. The people in need. And, man, my God, like, just hearing the stories and just talking, like, doing, you know, because we got to drop off the mill. We got to, like, hand off the food and just kind of see, you know, who's eating our food. Because, we, you know, I mean, we, we were we weren't just hashing food out. We were like, kind of had a menu set. We kind of, you know, thought about it. And that, I mean, those, those times when, you know, we had to go to the community center and just hand out food, like kind of set, set, kind of set the bar on like what feeding, what feeding people kind of really meant, you know? So from there on, it's like, anything from here on is like a million dollars you know anything that we do you know from here on can be great so that that taught our team a lot you know and just to never take anything for granted and you know we're just i hate using this word you know not hate but kind of i think it's cliche but bless you know and uh, yeah, that just put so much fire in the team and just like, go do better, go do better, you know, go do better. That, that allowed you then, you know, you were able to put a tarp outside, well, the, the, the awning, mm -hmm. the tent, excuse me. And yeah. you know, when they allowed outside dining, then you were able to seat appropriately and you had protocols put into place that were really, really straightforward, really, you know, it was clear as day when people came up the table space. Oh, yeah. You had outdoor seating, you had masking regulations, 
all these things to allow people to come. And, but you also doctored your menu. You, you know, you and I talked about that a little bit, that you changed the menu from what it originally was. And actually you're happier with it now than you were. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, like when we first, I mean, I, I, I don't know, like when we first opened, it was just all like, I wouldn't say ego, but like almost like showing off, I guess I would. Yeah. I'll be honest. I wanted, I wanted to show off like big time, you know, like, all right, we got this space. Now let's make some bad, like really delicious, amazing food. Not only, you know, that people can put a finger on, but also like visually, you know, how can it be accepted visually? Because I mean, one out of 10, you know, person from San Francisco like knows about Guam food or you know heard about Guam. I mean other than when you used to cook staff meal at Encanto, I'd never had Chamorro food. Yeah. So that's that was that was my thing. I'm like, how can I make this accept even more acceptable now that we're, you know, we made the new, you know, and Chronicle, now we have a target. You know, like people are just like, okay, what's this all about? So at that time, that first four months, we just wanted to show off and just do things a little harder, <laughs> you know, now that I, now that I see it, but now since that, since COVID has happened, then we kind of went more lax. I wouldn't say lax, but more, more, um, comfortable, like more. You're authentic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're doing something that that I used to say to you all the time when we were at Encanto, you're in a region of Guam called California. Exactly. So you're using what's in your, you know, I used to say we're in a region of Italy called San Francisco, right? Yeah. And now you're doing the same thing. You're in a region of Guam called San Francisco where you're working with what you have. Exactly, Chris. What grows here and you're making it in the same style. Like, mm -hmm. perfect example, you use spinach instead of um, um, taro leaves. <laughs> taro leaves were just like kind of hard to get, you know? It's like every now and again, they'll have it and it's just like a lot of work, but but just trying to be consistent and be like, man, why don't we just flip the script? Spinach is always available. You know, it's amazing, you know? Like, have you tasted a spinach with a root in, connected to it? Like, kind of. you, know? you know what I mean? Like, so I was like, all right. And that's what kind of like brought it back. Like, dude, Chris used to like do Italian food, but with these ingredients. And that's what I'm like, all right, hell yeah. I'm, I was starting to find my groove and I found my groove. I, I found it, you know? I, I could say personally, I found my groove in, in sharing our food, not only like trying to stick to the ingredients that you know are only available in, in Guam, but how to adapt with the ingredients that are available here and fresher so that's what i kind of be like i'm fucking i'm good i'm good i could i could work with i could work with this trickery and turn it into escabeche it doesn't have to be you know a cabbage that's not in season or, or whatnot or broccolini or you know what have you but i just always bring it back to get that base flavor now and then everything else is just props and props are like the ingredients you know and that's what still up today, all that stuff is, yeah, up to, the, up to today. It's like, when we, when we talk about the menu, I, I still think about that, you know, like, and I always think about like, you know, if, if they go, if they grow together, they go together. That's a and that's, thing. And, you know, it's stuck with me, man. And, and I can't thank you enough. You did it yeah. on your own, bro. You did it. You absorbed it. You took it. You ran with it. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. You know, and I think now it's you training the next generation. Yeah. That's the goal. And it's cool. I mean, there's, I have two cooks that straight from Guam, like that just wanted to come out here and cook with us. And, you know, it's, it's very inspiring, you know, like, shit guam kids are starting to want to work here you know like huh, we might so now like on that note like i'm trying to start this program 
with like kids, you know, with young cooks that are going to thinking about becoming a professional chef or whatnot, starting a program between Guam and San Francisco. So as soon as they're done with their intern or they're working with the warehouse or uh, working with a, um, a market out there, there's this huge market that kind of um, uh, recruits uh, culinary students to like work on like their butchery department or, you know, or their vegetable department or produce department. Now we're trying to get those kids who are really want to take, take it to the next level, come out here for three months, you know, teach them, you know, show them, show, show them, you know, the culture of the food culture, whatnot, and the, the ingredients of the whole farmer, the whole relationship with the farmers and have them kind of bring it back to the island. So, yeah. So our first, our next move is trying to open up a spot in Guam, just so we can have that connection. Cross it over. You can take people yeah. from there back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. So yeah, I mean, years now. You've been open now. Two, three years now. Three, going on three. Yeah. Yeah. Two three. years. Two years was pandemic years. But those pandemic years i feel in a way that they were as they were as difficult as they were they helped shape where you are now 100 percent. i i think for everybody you know i think for everybody and i think it also taught a lot of businesses like how how to how to cut how to cut where how to trim the fat where the fat needed to be trimmed you know and still run a sustainable business yeah. I mean, and what, you know, and uh, I, I, I guess businesses are happening, you know, like they made it. I think that was like a goal for a lot of, a lot of restaurants. And um, yeah, like I said, it's just, it kind of showed us or kind of felt like we, you know, like things could be worse, fortunate and blessed to be in this position that we are in. Well, I'm really proud of you because you stuck to your guns. You're cooking the food you want to cook and mm -hmm. it's a real true representation of you. And it, that's really rare. Um, you know, I, like I said, I'd never had Chamorro food until I used to make staff meal and um, eating at the restaurant is an absolute pleasure and it's always fun, you know, and it's, it's you. I mean, it really comes through. Thank you, and thank you for your, your, you know, your guidance and just always being around us. You know, either it's giving us shit or just words <laughs> of inspiration. But all in all, it, it's we love it. I love it. It worked, kid. You got mm -hmm. it. You done it. You done good. We're proud. Really. Thank you. Yeah. So we're gonna play a little game. We finish with a game. You ready? Let's go. Hamburger, hot dog. Hamburger. Ketchup, mustard. Ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too good, dude. I, I know what I want. <laughs> Sashimi nigiri. Ooh. Sashimi. Sea urchin caviar caviar shrimp lobster shrimp favorite crab dungeonies for most folks that would be dungeness crab <laughs> <laughs> pasta or noodles pasta ravioli dumplings Ravioli dumpling. I got an, you know, do you know? All right, just on this note, I remember Mark yelling, not telling me it's not a dumpling, it's a ravioli. So Every I'm not culture to has one. Every culture has a variety of a stuffed dough. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But dumplings are very distinct. Uh, yeah. Compared to ravioli. I'm going to go to ravioli because I feel ravioli can go and you can put anything in a ravioli. Burrito taco. 
burrito. I'm straight straight from San, to San Francisco, and like they do burritos here. Like, top. I really never envisioned tacos. You know, pork or beef? Pork. Duck or chicken? Chicken. Light beer, dark beer. Light beer. Red wine, white wine. White wine. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Fruit or chocolate? Fruit. Interesting. It's getting fun. Isn't this a yeah. fun thing? It's just straight up. Well, but wait, like the last two weeks, I've been craving chocolate. Are you like, I, I, I never like, I don't know. Like I, I went to Kauai um, on our break and we went to like this ch um, chocolate farm. And I'm like, since when was I ever intrigued or like try to like close my eyes and like think about the whole fermentation of this chocolate? Never, you know? And this was like a trip that uh, Amelia booked because her mom loves chocolate. And I'm just like, oh, chocolate. But then I went there and I was just like, holy shit, I, I appreciate it more. Oh, it's very different. I mean, when you go there and you see how it's grown and how it's grown, yeah. it makes you think a lot more. Yeah, that's so many steps and so many variables into what a chocolate bar would go in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that made me think of Rakuti. I'm like, dude, that guy was fucking doing it. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, like, I, I mean, you I think about it, all those people who have come through that restaurant back in the day, you had Rakuti in there. We had Marco Pierre White in there. We had yeah. Fergus Henderson. I mean, we had everybody come through. But now it's like, oh, shit. Like, Coffee's fucking badass. If you're a chocolatier, you're a badass. You know, like for sure. Oh man, there's so many like variables. But well, yeah, you think about it. You think about coffee too. The fermentation of coffee, the fermentation of chocolate, all of it. It's all yeah. unique. Mm -hmm. Man, it just never, never, never ends. I know. Which what's it, great about it, you is that it's a forever learning process, and you're forever growing, and you're forever getting, you know, hopefully getting knowledge and pushing forward. Oh yeah. Now, now it's like more not trying to figure out like on the business side, you know, you have to figure both. It becomes yeah. But favorite, favorite guilty pleasure. Oof. Favorite guilty pleasure. <laughs> Ichi bang. <laughs> has to be, has to be um, the red package. Has to be the red package. Yeah. Favorite fast food. In and out. Favorite candy. Haribo gummy bears. Do you leave? Do you leave the bag open for a little bit to let them get stale? You have to, otherwise you have to, and it'll get it soft, and you can like kind of chew it with your tongue. But right fresh, it's like ah, ah, ah. Okay, <laughs> and then it breaks up in little pieces. Yeah, and then you can like literally, you can like but when you leave it out and you leave it kind of soggy, you can actually actually chew yeah, it for sure so if people want to find you what's the best way for them to, to find you okay. uh you can find me at restaurant for betu on 2224 mission street wednesdays through sundays uh we are open from lunch from 12 o'clock to three and then we get the party started from five to ten and that's again Tuesday, um, Wednesday through Sunday. Or if not, you can find me at Mission Preschool <laughs> on Mondays for a bunch of two to five year olds. Nice. And on Instagram, you're at what? Uh, on Instagram, you can find us at Prebetu SF or my personal is for the people um, or Sean Apti. Um, nice. Yeah, we'd love to meet you all. Um, if you come to the restaurant and you say you hurt me through losing my mind, you will get a nice surprise. <laughs> Hootie, I'm proud of you. Thank you, you Chris. And thank you for all your help and your guidance and Have all your rants and all of that. We've thank always you. got your back. We've always got you. Thank you, man. Well, thanks, everybody. And listen, if you are in coming to San Francisco or you live in San Francisco and you haven't been to Prevetu, well, hurry up because you will definitely love it. 
The wine bar inside now is doing really, really beautiful natural wine program. They have an incredible beer program there that they work with small beer producers around the Bay Area. And the outside dining is always fun. So make sure you head on over, have a good time, say hi to Pootie and the team, and uh, enjoy it. On our note, our first Pig Rose of 2022 is April 10th, and it's with a natural wine company called Sub to, to Change. Tickets are available. Perfect. So go get your tickets. Nice. Thanks, Thank Pootie. I appreciate it. Cheers.